Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Mary covers homework on the subject of challenging addictions. Filmed on the 2nd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. All right, let's get started, everyone. So my job today is to review with you the homework I gave you after our presentation on challenging addictions. That was like just two days ago, wasn't it? So hopefully you've all made massive inroads into challenging eight or ten addictions in that 48 hours. That's not probably realistic. <laughs> but look, um, there's a few things that I want to say, just uh, coming on the back of Corny's uh, session with you then as well and a few basic things I want to cover with you again before we get on to hearing about your homework. So John just asked me a really great question. He said, does an addiction always have to feel like a compulsion or driven? Like I know I have, he said, I know I'd like to be right but it doesn't really feel compulsive to me. And that's a good question because many of us are like this with our addictions. We're so used to getting them met and we have our life so organised to get them met that we don't even notice the compulsion that is there. As I said to John, it's like a smoker with cigarettes. The smoker buys a packet of cigarettes at the store and has them with them. And each time they feel like a cigarette, they just pick it up and smoke it. So whether it's five minutes or ten minutes or an hour or two hours between cigarettes, they're just comfortably having their cigarettes. Now, if you took away that packet of cigarettes for five or six or eight or ten hours, you'd be sure that the smoker's now starting to feel more sensitive to that compulsion, aren't they? And this is where challenging your addictions, you're going to have to be really like self-reflective to notice the things that happen easily in your life that you like. Notice that you might not even be sensitive to the compulsion yet, but you can start to experiment with, is this thing in harmony with God's love? And if it's not, maybe I'll stop it. And trust me, then you'll start to feel some compulsions and urgency in your life about, oh, I really want that thing that I haven't had for eight hours or four days. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. The other thing I noticed when you were discussing your homework with Cornelius was this issue around sin. Many of you, if you're honest with yourselves, aren't yet feeling that your addictions are sinful. You feel justified in your responses when they're not met and you can't see that even your responses are based on your justification of the error inside of you. Does that make sense? There's no analysis of this addiction in regards to God's truth about this. It feels like God wasn't there for me. No, God's truth is God was there for you. But there's a feeling, no, God wasn't there for me. And there's no challenge of that feeling at, to simply see it as a feeling rather than the truth. There's still a lot of feeling like a lot of belief, <clears throat> excuse me, that you guys have that your feelings are truthful and justified, when often they're, they're very much not. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, did you have your hand up, Seth? Yep. I was just going to say that I noticed in going through trying to remember all the people that I'd interacted with and writing them down, that it kept coming to me that... Um, the interactions that I have with women, I'm much more able to see how I want something from mummy. Yep. Um, the interactions I have with men happen so smoothly that I didn't even, like, as you said, there's no feeling of compulsion, but it, it's, it's just nice. It's just so it's nice. It's just, just nice and there's not even a sense of any sin that might be occurring. No, but I, I did see that, oh, well, because down where the group where I'm staying, 
There are, I think there are only four men inside that main area and the rest of us are women. Someone else pointed that out to me and then I was, oh, well, who are those men? And there are four men who I feel totally comfortable with just, you know, whatever, interacting with. Not yep. that I have actually interacted with quite all of them just because yep. of time. Yep. But, um, yeah, it's like that doesn't feel off and yet I... In looking at it, of course, because I've been given so many pointers, yeah. um, I started to see why with those men that was off because they're the sort of men who will also join in. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know what happens in a group like this that's dominated by females, there's a few men and everyone shares this massive big codependent addiction that Jesus just spent an hour or so pointing out to you is that yeah often the the women feel really comfy engaging with the men because the addictions the codependence is already there there's already the male believes it should happen the woman believes it should happen and it happens and everyone feels awesome uh, unless they're a little bit sensitive and then maybe they feel something's off for the guys but the women generally feel like everything's okay but the other women well they've got a whole other lot of stuff going on and sometimes they're just competing for the men. So it's very common that the interactions between women in a group, group that shares this codependency would not feel as harmonious as you've, as you've pointed out. So it's a good observation. Oh, I'm not sure that I understood that exactly, but perhaps I didn't. That I... Oh, anyway, your I major should addiction, to that. Yeah, your I major addiction to that getting met is with the men, isn't it? And it feels smooth and harmonious because it's it, the codependence exists. Whereas with women and women, there's less codependence. There's sure. more competition. It's a much more important thing so you, with the man. It's important to look at both, but you're going to be more sensitive to the stuff with the women where you feel a little bit uncomfortable or I wanted something there and it didn't happen or oh, I feel a bit unsure, unsure because there's not the same codependence. Sure. What I mean is my addiction is much more important to be met by the men not necessarily either oh, right. it's just being met by the man so you it can be equally important that you get addictions met by men and women but in this case the men are meeting the addictions more and the women less so you notice the stuff with the women more than with the men thanks make sense make sense everyone yep okay cool so if we this is just um, revising the steps that we talked about the other day in challenging an addiction. Now, keep in mind, I said, that the intellectual deconstruction has to happen in this process. So you have to go through an intellectual process of noticing the addiction or noticing the addictive event or interaction and acknowledging that it is a sin. What I noticed for you guys, as I just said, is a lot of you haven't even had the intellectual recognition that it's a sin. Now, eventually, you're going to have to get to the, the emotion. So in the intellectual de deconstruction phase, this is where you're gathering info, you're using your brain to help you analyse your life. And you're going to have to acknowledge the addiction and that it's a sin. You're going to have to do that intellectually. Say, oh, actually, I can see that that's wrong, what I'm doing there. Well, that's harming other people. And you can intellectually notice the feelings and responses that you have. That's different to actually feeling them. Like a lot of you have noticed, oh yeah, I feel cranky. But there's no willingness to really feel through what's going on, is there? It's just, oh, I noticed that response. So I would say you're still in the intellectual deconstruction phase. Then you're going to get into this emotional deconstruction, which is a lot of this, well, that's all the all of the things I mentioned the other day will be involved in that. So noticing the event or interaction and acknowledging that as a sin, emotionally that'll happen. Feeling the addictive emotional responses, that will be a real feeling soul-based process now, rather than just, oh, noted it, okay. It's good to note all these things and work with them, but you're going to go through this more emotional, emotionally overwhelming process for every step here. The decision not to judge the addiction will be emotional. 
not feeding the addiction. And remember I said there's a distinct motivation once we get to this part of the deconstruction process. And the motivation for not feeding the addiction is because you want to find the emotion that you've been running from. And then to feel through the addiction itself and experience your false beliefs as emotions. And this is what I was referring to when I first started speaking to you now, when I said that a lot of you, are, you're justifying your false beliefs. And while you do that, you're never going to be able to release them emotionally. You're going to have to get to a place where you recognise the sin and want to feel through these false beliefs as things you're going to have to let go. You'll feel like, oh, I want it, but you know what, I've got to let it go. It's not justified internally anymore. And then you'll allow your hurt feelings, whatever they are. Remember I said that's the magic place where the addiction can now be lost forever, leave us. And then we're going to have increased awareness and we'll be also motivated to keep going. All right, so that's just a bit of a revision. Let's look at our homework questions. So the first thing was a journal exercise. And it was, what are the reasons you aren't engaging the challenge of your addictions every day in multiple areas of your life right now? So why hasn't all this stuff Mary just rabbited on about already been happening? Daniel? Um, I started writing heaps and heaps of things like my life's turned upside down it's too hard, etc. And I realised they're all excuses as I was writing them. So great. But I kept writing you. them anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you establish anything after you'd written all the excuses? Um, That's all right if yeah. you didn't. No, yeah. It's good you recognise the excuse part of it. Uh, okay. If we go to Linda on this side, and then we'll come to Andrew on that side. Um, I had the big realisation that up until this point I really haven't even wanted to see what they are. Yeah, yep. That's great, Linda. I, I'd agree and I think it's awesome that you recognise this is where I'm at. Yeah. And then I realised that the reason that I haven't wanted to see you is because I want to feel good. I want to feel safe. Yeah. I want to feel liked. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to feel judged or condemned. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And in essence, that's a lot of our, um, uh, our investment, isn't it, in not seeing our addictions? Because we don't, we're, not, we're unwilling to feel other feelings. Yeah. Andrew, what did you yeah. discover? Yeah, Andrew, um, I just, I'm lazy. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's not enough benefits. Seemingly, yep. All right, uh, if we go to, yeah, Pierre. Um, I don't want to see them as a sin and my will to love is too low. Is low, yep. Mm. Did you discover why that is? For many reasons, but I have a blank now. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I, I, I'm I'm thinking of it all the time. <laughs> no, I have a blank about it. That's all right. Something. If we go yeah. on to someone else, it, the the purpose of the exercise is to sort of help you get more personal with like, why am I justifying this situation, or why haven't I wanted to look at it? So. If we come to Phoebe on this side and, uh, yep, we'll go to Elvira on the other side after that. Um, I keep like telling myself I want my life to change, I'm not happy, but I'm to totally terrified of it changing. But in certain, there's certain parts of my life that I don't want to change, like I want to cling yep. on to that. Yeah. You know, so at the expense of anything, like any change. You know? Yeah. Is it sort of like you feel like, oh, no, I want to, you're telling yourself, I want change, I want growth, I want growth. But then when you look at it, you go, actually, I don't really want those things to change because they're kind of comfortable for yeah, me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, can I just give a bit of revision, everyone? Please hold the microphone close to your mouth. 
If you can't, yeah, I can't, I don't have one. Here we go. You want it to be at this angle to your mouth. You see? So a lot of you hold it like that, and that there's a lot of distance between you and the mic. Or like that, a lot of distance. You want it to be close so we can hear. Some of you, like, if you can't hear yourself well through the speakers, we can't hear you either. And it's, it's an issue of love. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who were we up to? Elvira. Elvira. Um, I don't want to face the enormity of the harm I've caused. You don't want to face the enormity of the harm you've caused? Yeah. So you don't want to have the awareness of the sin, basically. I go into self-punishment. Yeah, so you go into another addiction to avoid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Michael. Getting sidetracked with everyday demands. Yes, and you could almost say that's an addiction in itself, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we go to Mel. Mel, um, for me it was being in denial and an automatic response of being in the world and relating to others. Uh-huh. So you mean like it's just normal? I just want to stay with how the rest of the world is operating? Yeah, it's just an automatic response without um, having a great deal of awareness. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and a lot of it's denial, I think, denial yeah. of those things. And yeah. I suppose I'm encouraging you all to think about why has there been this lack of awareness? Why, what's supporting my denial, you know? Because a lot of you have heard a lot of divine truth and you've heard about addiction, you've heard about fears, you've heard about emotions, and yet there's still a, a sort of a reticence to challenge anything. So what makes me want to hold on to denial? It's, yeah, thanks, Mel. Uh, if we come to Carti, and who did I have over here? No one, Carol. So first to Carti, yep. I want to avoid it at all costs. It's all too hard. And why is that, Cardi? It just seems too big and overwhelming. I, I don't want to see myself. Do you need to speak up or hold the mic closer? Can't hear you very well. Yeah. You don't want... What was the very last thing you said to me? I don't want to see myself. Yes, I agree. Mm. I agree. And for yourself, there's a large willingness to harm others in the in your avoidance of seeing yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big issue, yeah. Okay, Carol. Carol, I don't want to get started because the whole thing seems enormous and I'm discouraged before I begin and then I might put a whole lot of work in and fail. Right, so there's a fear of failure. There's a feeling like it's too enormous. You know, Jesus is calling a bit insincere on that one. I feel it's an excuse that you're making for yourself. What do you want to say, John? Yeah, I feel with many, there's still this excuses they're making for themselves and what they're listing as emotions are not really the real emotion. They're just the excuses that help you avoid the emotion. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff is just about you listing your excuses for not doing something. And it's, I, think, I think Daniel's first comment was great. Yeah. This is where you started listing all the different reasons and then you started realising they were all excuses. And then you realise, well, I might as well keep listing them because that's all I can think of at the moment, right? And, and that's a great place to at least begin, I feel. Mm. But, but there are a lot of excuses going on when not much emotional feeling going on. So, Yeah. So, and I suppose that's why I keep driving you, but what's, what is causing this tonight? What? Because I'm not, I'm not feeling that emotional engagement. Cardi, I think you're honest. You don't want to see yourself. You're angry about having to see yourself. You know, Linda, I, I agree, like with your comment also. But yeah, we let's let's now get even more real. Bruce, um, I do, just don't want to feel the pain of giving them up. You know? Yeah, <laughs> don't want to go through I the. Just don't want to go through that pain. Yep. And some of them are only so small they don't hurt anyone anyway. Yes. <laughs> nice and there's the justification, her. exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right, if we go to Lani. Um, I don't want to feel the terror that's, that I'd have to face to go through, you know, like speaking the truth to people. It's one of my big, you know, like telling lies. 
yeah. is one of my big addictions. And yeah. the, the terror of telling the truth is what I don't want to face. Yeah, you don't want to feel it and you're using it as an excuse. Mm. It, remember when I gave you this homework, I said, guys, now when you think about this question, you're going to find a lot of the answers in the first talk that Cornelius gave. Do you remember that? I said the fear, the lack of faith in God and self. So, Lani, if we got even more serious about your answer, wouldn't we say, I lack faith that I'll be able to feel through the fear? Absolutely. I yes. lack faith that God's laws will support me in feeling the fear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it just even willing to start is... Yeah. You sort of feel frozen to the spot and... <laughs> exactly. And this is where we need to be careful, just as Jesus said, of making the excuse of the fear rather than saying the real issue is I lack faith that I will change by feeling the fear. That I, you know, this is the re more real reasons. The other, can you remember the other things, anyone, the other things that were in Corny's talk? If we go to Peter. An unwillingness to be emotionally overwhelmed, so like not wanting to challenge the addictions because you know after X amount of time it's going to be emotionally overwhelming and I don't want to feel that. Exactly. Like yeah. the addictions are in place, aren't they, to help us avoid emotional overwhelm. Yeah, exactly. Giving them up, we're going to have to face that, aren't we? Face mm -hmm. the overwhelm. Yeah, 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 true. Uh, Glenda? I also like facing myself that I can actually do this um, and I also feel that I don't as yet believe in a loving God. Yes, but do you know what I want to call you on because I've heard you say that a lot of times. You use that as an excuse. You use that, you use this idea that God, I don't believe in a loving God so I don't have to do anything is really what I've heard you say in various ways over a long time. But in that, you are avoiding facing, why don't I believe in a loving God? And a lot of it is because I want to avoid how the experiences in my childhood felt, and instead I'll blame God for not loving me instead of other people. This is a big issue for you. It's a big block where you just sit and you get angry at God and you justify inaction, you justify not engaging, you justify all these things, saying it's God's problem, when really... God has done absolutely zero to harm you. And sure, you might have feelings of, uh, about not wanting to trust God, but honestly, Glenda and you, I feel more of a feeling of not wanting to face the rage that you have about what was done to you and you keep trying to blame God. And it's almost like an addiction. Yeah. Okay, Trent. Uh, some of the addictions I've journaled here have been personal relationships with people and and the, um, the angry women or placating or the um, demanding women and things like that. So I fear bringing them up with them. Yep. Um, and also underlying that is, is the judgment and the rejection and not being loved and those sorts of feelings underneath that fear that I've got in speaking my truth. Yeah, so can you see there as well what you've done? You've gone, look, I'm not challenging these addictions because I'm afraid of these women and I'm a bit angry as well and I'm afraid of them getting angry with me. But all of that was a big excuse to not challenge the addiction, wasn't it? Yes. So there's another feeling at play for you, which is either, look, I just lack courage I don't want to feel fear, I don't think it's worth it, or I, I actually want, I want what I get from the women when I do this more than I want truth. Yes. Do you see what I'm yeah, getting at? Yeah, I stretched a little bit the last couple of days. Because a lot of guys here, you've got to be careful, hey? Jesus just gave a very confronting talk about the condition of the men and women in this room, and yes, there's a lot of angry, demanding women. But guys, you've got to be careful about then going, oh, well, I'm just, the women are just not nice and it's just, I'm, it's hard for me, I'm afraid, you know. And that's one big excuse because often 
Honestly, guys, you want to get the feeling that the women give you when you go, yeah, I'm a crappy man, and they go, oh, you're a lovely guy. And you just, you walk out of it going, oh, maybe it doesn't feel, I don't feel that, you know, masculine in that interaction, but actually I do like that feeling that I just got. So you've got to be careful about, like, justifying your inaction and things like that because you're, you're just as party to this codependence. That's what codependence is. It's, I'll give you this, you give me that. And it cuts both ways. So be careful about then just blaming, oh, then, then they'll get angry at me. Yep. Imagine if my soulmate did that with me. Every, I was full of addictions, full of facade, full of this stuff. Imagine if he went, you know what, she might get a bit tetchy if I point out that whole thing. Where would we be? We'd just be in the two of us up here, like giving a pretty crappy presentation, going, You're all wonderful. Don't worry. God loves you. You can feel it. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go very far, would it? It wouldn't help you grow. And there is, we've got to stop men and women, because we do this as well. We go, Oh, it's scary, so I shouldn't. It's scary. That's why I don't do it. But it's not, we don't not challenge the addiction because it's scary. We don't challenge the addiction because we have other beliefs about fear, about God, about emotions, about truth. And these are the things to get real about. Make sense? If you just go behind you, Trent, this lady, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I don't think we heard from you. Yeah, Carmel. Carmel, yep. I just feel very disheartened. Yep. What do you feel disheartened about? I think the emotional overwhelmingness. This morning I was feeling good, the best I've felt since I've been here. And then after today, I just feel like giving up. I enjoyed your exercise yesterday and I, I sort of tried to work on an addiction that I thought I had. Yeah. But I ended up feeling something totally different. I thought I was going to um, work, do something to bring out some loneliness in me. Yeah. So I isolated myself from everybody, but I didn't feel loneliness. I felt very unloving because I felt I should have been putting myself in with other people with the interactions, but I wasn't. But I'd never felt that unlovingness before. Yeah. Carmel, I feel there's a few things that I'd probably like to say to you. Uh, first is when you receive a lot of truth, as all of you did this morning, and then you go, now I just feel like giving up, that's an angry response. That's saying, I don't want to feel what was just presented to me, you know. And, I, and perhaps I don't want to be overwhelmed or whatever it is, but it's an expression of resistance, an expression of oh, it's all too much now, no. When actually, if we're going to remember the map that was drawn here this morning, if we're going to get out of la-la land and into some personal truth and eventually to God, that's never going to fly. And it's actually, it, when we say, that's it, I'm giving up, it's angry. Trust me, I've done it. I think I've been told I've got a lot of anger, but I've, I've always thought it's more fear that I have. Yeah, and this is where, honestly, guys... Just, you have to get real. This is why we had to be so firm this morning because many of you women have this, a, a very pleasant facade covering a huge amount of rage. And I agree, deep down underneath there, there's lots of fear. But at the moment, you don't even know really, you're not in connection with that fear because the, ma the major fear that dominates your life is that... Uh, I'm not going to get an addiction met. You know, it's not even the real fear, the things you're afraid of. It's just like, I need control all the time, you know. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of anger to work on. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Jesus, you want to add to that? Yeah, for yourself, there is an angry response to the fact that you received some truth that you didn't want to hear. And then the angry response is, oh, I'm going to give up now. And that's the angry response. So that, that is your way of controlling how much truth comes to you. Does that make sense to you? So whenever anybody tells you the truth, you go, oh, I'm going to give up now. And that's, that, what that does to the other person is it makes them feel sorry for you. 
Oh, isn't it? Isn't it? So this is a manipulative way of controlling how much truth comes to you. And so what it does is it makes another person, the person who's giving you the truth, feel sorry for you. They feel, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that much, it wasn't that bad, you know, you're not that bad, don't worry about that. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking to not feel as bad as you feel, right? So it's all about the emotional avoid avoidance of emotion. But, but it's a manipulative technique being used to actually prevent more truth from coming to you. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. And you need to see it as such. All, all of the, there, many in this audience have a have a, a tendency towards walking away from situations because they feel it's too hard, right? And when you do that, you're angry, and you're angry because you just didn't have another addiction met. Mm. Does that make sense? Fair enough. Yep. yep. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Let's move on to our next question. Okay. What are the emotional reasons why you're justifying not engaging the emotional challenge of your addictions right now? It's really the same question, phrased in a different way. So does anyone have anything more to add on that one? Or we move on to how you went with actually challenging an addiction. Alan, you want to add to this one or the next one? This one, yep. Yeah, Alan. I'm a little bit afraid to um, engage because I've, I've been lit up the garden path by spirits before in the past, and yep. which I thought was a wonderful space and time and everything, and then realised deep down inside it didn't feel right, but it took quite some time to actually even to come to that realisation. And, and currently now with all the information received, I, I'm, I'm hearing, which I don't know if it's my guide or a spirit, because I'm just not that sensitive at the moment or connected enough, I don't know what it is. If you just hold the mic a bit close to I'm, you. I'm just not sure if I trust what I'm, what I'm hearing or what I'm doing currently. Yep. And I, therefore I'm, I'm afraid. I don't want to get led up the garden path. Yeah. Do you know what, though? When we live in addictions, we are the most manipulated by spirits. Deconstructing your addictions is the only way to be free of spirit influence. Can you see that? Because when we're in addiction, we want to avoid an emotion, so spirits can help us. When we no longer want to avoid any emotion, spirits can't touch us. Yeah, well, I, I think today's the first day I've actually started working on an addiction. Yep. That's, my, that's my truth. Um, yep. Today's the first day. I, I think I, that's great. Yeah, I struggled with the <laughs> other days because there's so much going on in my head with, yep. look at this addiction, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, and I, I couldn't focus on one. It was just... Yep. Ridiculous. Yeah. That is what it's like when you start to want to see your addictions. You realise they're everywhere. Yeah. And then you go through the process of challenging one once and then you go, oh my gosh, that was nothing. Now they're everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But just beware, you know, when you get these little promptings, oh, fear, like often it's because spirits like you in your addictions. Can you see that? Yeah. They because you're easier to manipulate. So yeah. they're going to want to undermine you breaking down your addictions. But there really is no danger in someone controlling you once you don't have any addictions. Okay. It doesn't matter if I stand up here and tell you anything or do anything. If you're willing to feel all your emotions, I can't manipulate you. Yeah, right. Got it. Does thank that you. make sense? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we adding to this question? Yep, Pierre, you remembered what you wanted to say? Yeah, Mary, I, I would like to comment about your question before because it was such a good question. And it feels like to me now, it starts feeling like everything is an excuse. And it, everything I, I write down is an excuse. Why? And it's come back to lack of humility, but why? And exactly. it's come back to not enough desire to love. Um, why? You know, it's just like excuses after excuses and why? I don't know. I'm just like... Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is where when you actually challenge some addictions or face some personal truth actually, you begin to feel some things and very often the first things you feel are your emotional resistances to engaging the process. So remember when I, when I gave you this talk, I talked about having to confront my lack of faith. I received all this personal truth and suddenly the only emotion I could feel was, 
I just don't have any faith that I can bloody change. You know, I want to hold on to this facade because that's the best bit of me, I think. And if we see this bit, I don't have any faith that this error can leave. And so I had to go through that feeling, which is why this... And I think it's good that you start to recognise, oh, that's another excuse, oh, there's another excuse. But, but you will encounter some feelings as you begin to grow this will to love. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on to our next question, which was how you went challenging at least one addiction. So who feels like they had a good go at that? Ange? <laughs> this is a long story. Um, I'll try and yep. bottom line it. Um, yeah, well, the obvious addiction for me was my superiority. Yep. And I felt like I really wanted to challenge that right from day one. And I really prayed to God to see, see it all. And just for the next two days, I just kept seeing it, kept seeing it, kept seeing it. So I chose this one as a continuation of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got to, and I had all sorts of other little emotions, you know, about um, my mother suppressing me and some, some blocks with um, anger to God. And, and then I, all of a sudden, there's this, um, I realised that my lack of openness to Rob was all tied up with it, you know, with my dad. Mm -hmm. And it was like I had two huge kind of um, addictions to deal with, but that was some way really linked. Yeah. And um, what happened is eventually I got to, um, you know, we were driving, I had a dream, been having some dreams that had been helping me. And, we were driving, I stayed with Rob yesterday and we went to town and on the way I told him about my dream and we're talking about it and I realised that I really don't, um, you know, I've got this thing with men and I could see it with all these other relationships, mm -hmm. just even friends who've tried to help me, men who don't um, yep, believe my addiction. Yep. And um, so I got to, basically I got to real um, anger and rage that I cannot have this love from my dad. You know, I really want it and what's wrong with it and, like, I feel like that's oh, so what I'm stuck So you can't with. have... Yep, so you got to... You did some intellectual deconstruction, yep. it sounds like. You were yep. analysing things, yep. Yep. discussing with Robert. Yeah. And then you got to a feeling of yep. just the resistance, basically. Yeah, I, yep. what but I still want it. I want this addiction, yes. actually. And I'm still not seeing it as the complete sin, although yep. I'm starting to. Yeah. <laughs> that's great, Ange. Yeah, that's real. You got to the place where you realised, no, nah, I still want it. But it's the sin bit that you're going to have to work on. Yeah. Okay. Who else? Uh, yes, yeah, Sandra? Hi. I, um, I did the same thing in the terms of um, this big thing that came up with Jesus telling me about how evil the emotions inside of me are and and so I thought, well, shit, I've got to feel how angry I am, you know. I've been going through every little interaction I have. I just go into the room and what I feel is feeling anger. But after today's discussion, I'm feeling that's just the rage of the spirits once again manipulate. Just I'm just wanting that power and there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, Sandra, I reckon for you, you've really got to acknowledge the sin, even intellectually. At the moment, it's like you don't have any sort of sense of how damaging your rage is and you go off to feel the anger but if you I agree you're just feeling the emotions and you're feeling justified in the emotions there's no sense of like I want to get rid of this emotion you like the emotion and that's where you have to start you have to start with I like this I want it and I want to be able to get away with it as well like, you do I feel like God should forgive me and should just I should just have it and yeah and there is, honestly, there is, you haven't even done any work on educating yourself intellectually on how damaging the sin is. You haven't even looked at the carnage that is left behind you. Remember Corny said in our addictions we're always looking forward, not behind? As a res you're not looking at what's left behind you as a result of your rage. You haven't considered like that inside every person that you project rage at, that you want to rage at, is a hurt self, a hurt child, and what that's like for that part of them. You haven't thought about any of that, the damage that it does. So when I was experiencing, when I've harmed a person, 
and, the, and when Jesus was saying that, I'm actually punching them and, and cried about how that felt that wasn't real then. Oh, no, Sandra, it just doesn't feel real to yeah, me. Okay. No. I just feel that there is no... You, you, want, you want the rage <laughs> and you love it and it's your God and until that shifts, you can self-punish. I've seen you do that many times, yeah. but it's not a sincerity coming from your soul. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, who haven't we heard from? Hiroko? Um, I'm Hiroko. Um, I wanted to start with my rage and anger, anger towards uh, Kim. Mm -hmm. I, I've been doing a lot and I find out how much damaging myself and my partner and I stop actually I stop talking and just listen and then I, f and I found out I do for every man any single bit of person and I didn't know that part and and I, f I wanted to be above men. I'm right, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is now you're describing mm -hmm. your addiction. How yep. did you challenge it? So I, uh, I thought I, um, I stopped saying things I used to do to Kim and just feel before I say anything because I'm so impatient to collect Ken's tiny bits of mistake while yeah. I have so tons of them. So, um, and what happened? Oh, so easy to talk to Ken and he's opened up. Um, uh, open up for me. Um, and I could talk to him. So you're yeah. saying that when you didn't rouse on him all the time, you actually heard more from him? Yeah. And I've discovered how much I didn't know. I didn't listen to him. And I, I was so unkind. Unkind action. So, Hiroko, where is the challenge inside of you, though? Did you... Was it just a pleasant experience that suddenly you stopped doing something you're in the habit of and, and um, you just found it was actually nicer in your relationship? Um, no. Because um, that's um, good if it was. I'm not saying yeah, that's wrong. But I'm just feeling how yucky I am. Yeah, see, yeah. I feel you're in addiction right now. With it's me. right now. Yes. Wow. So we're going to move on. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Who else had a go at it? If we go to Phoebe. Um, I wanted to challenge, I, I keep getting a big feeling of feeling a fear of it being alone and I feel like a lot of my relationship is about that, like I'm terrified of being alone. And so I woke up and I heard my phone buzz and I knew it was a Facebook thing. And it was like, but I just realised every morning usually at home, like within an hour of waking up, sorry, yeah. I'm checking my phone to see, and it's not because I want to tell the world about me, but I want to just know. Feel connected. Feel connected. And yeah. so I, ch I didn't do that. And it was like, it was actually, it was horrible. Like I just had to lie there and I started feeling really uncomfortable and alone. Mm -hmm. And I intellectually was like, okay, I've got to stay with this. Within half an hour, I was... I forgot almost that that process and that commitment to that and I was going over to Daniel's tent and feeling t you know kind of just seeking to get out of that feeling yeah. and yeah. and because of I feel maybe Daniel's emotions to me he was trying to make me feel better straight away he said something and we can both we started going oh my god this is we're both in addiction here yeah. so I left and went back to my van and and I started to feel how hopeless and alone I feel a smidgen of that so yeah. just being more aware of like it's insidious and I just yes. forget so quickly my aim yes. Yeah. yes 
Uh, that's cool, hey? Like you felt, you felt the compulsion, you went, no, I'm not going there, and then you noticed how quickly, like, woo, now I'm back in the compulsion, and oh, I've got to go. <laughs> that's what it's like when you start yeah. challenging addictions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like for everyone, you're going to have to get used to that. Oh, 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 oh. It's not just going to be magic. Woo, I went through all those steps, Mary said in one day, you know, because your will is engaged in wanting these things and it's you're placing a challenge to that will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Karina? Um, I was sort of shocked at the difference between, um, like, um, just challenging some physical addictions, how much easier that was than the emotional ones. They were so covert and slippery and... I slid back into it, the same behaviour, and was just yep. re, um, much easier, the physical. Yep. Okay, who else had a go at challenging addiction? Glenda? Yes, Glenda, here, here. Sorry. Keep your hand up. Yeah. Glennis. Oh, sorry, Glennis. <laughs> That's sorry. what Connie's saying to me. Yep. <laughs> Um, I had so much trouble with this homework, um, the addictions right from the first, sorry, right from the first question right through and I don't even know when I'm in addiction yeah. until somebody tells me after yeah. that I was unloving and was in addiction. Yeah, yeah. And I got to the end of the day and I thought I'll challenge something, I won't have a cup of tea at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. I've, um, supper, but I won't have a cup of tea. And then I heard this little voice going, "We can have one tomorrow." You know, wow. the excuse was, wow. you know, well, you know, it's only, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that's denial, really, isn't it? Huge, yeah, huge and wanting denial. to excuse yourself, huge denial that you're not noticing yes, the addictions yeah. all the way in your life, and like yeah. lots of us start in that place. So. But the key is now what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And then excusing yourself over the cup of tea one, yeah. I just it, find it really hard. You know, when you say that, I wouldn't know the first step, you know, other than writing down what I do every day or my interactions and getting more aware of actually what I'm physically doing Yeah. and what I'm saying and taking more notice of what I'm saying and interacting with people, Yeah. you know. Yep. And that's where you're going to have to start if you want to develop this will to love. Because you're going to have to start somewhere and yeah. at the moment, you know, obviously a lot of your addiction. And also remember what I said to Daniel and Phoebe the other night. Notice when you're angry, there's a huge sign of where an addiction is not being met. Yes. And that happens for you, doesn't yes. it? You get yeah. angry. Yes. Okay, am I going to use my will to love in this situation and discover what addiction is in play here and challenge it? Do something different. Yeah, yeah. or am I just going to be angry? The first thing I've got to recognise it, hey. Yes. Yeah, and this is where you have to engage your will in a in a more constructive way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Uh, Tess. Tess. So mine was just a small one, and I just did intellectual. Yeah. And it's something um, since I've been here, I've felt this. Social awkwardness, sort of, especially like around the dining room at meal times, and so initially my thought was, "Ah, oh, this is a fear of rejection." Then later on, I found that actually, no, I'm pushing people away. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I was challenging my addiction because you were talking about interactions, and I'm usually been quite quiet, and I'm trying to be so I tried to be kind of a bit more interactive and animated. And at the end of the night, <laughs> I was feeling really puffed up and, am I great? And it was just another addiction. And so I think at the end of it, like, I really got to, um, it's a big fear of telling the truth. So I'm trying to avoid the situations where, where I'm confronted to try and tell the truth. And I just run away from that all the time. Yeah. Yes, um, that's actually, you actually work through quite a lot of your um, desire to tell yourself a story, didn't you? You sort of like, oh, I'm in. I don't want to be around people because I'm afraid of getting rejection. Then you realise no, that's I'm telling myself a big story. Actually, I want control of this situation, and then you challenge yourself to be a bit more forward and open, and then went, oh, now I just went into another addiction. You've actually done quite a bit of work there in self-awareness. Yeah, thank you, Tess. That was good. Yeah. 
Okay, one more and then we probably have to wrap up. Um, Susan. I was almost hoping you wouldn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, m mine was around my son, Pete. Mm -hmm. um, it's his birthday today and um, we organised a gift for him before we left home and he assured us we shouldn't ring him for his birthday but Michael wanted to go this morning and ring him and I was just feeling the compulsion to go with him as well and talk to him. Yep. So I just um, felt what that felt like and I didn't act on it. So what did, what do did you feel your addiction is with Pete, Sue? Um, well, in that moment it was just to have contact with home, I think. Um, oh. your addiction. Probably feeling reassured. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this is where I feel you have a lot more work to do on the acknowledgement of sin of yeah. your addiction with Peter and what yeah. it is you actually want to get from that relationship. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I feel that there's quite a lot there where you haven't done the work on considering the sin and yeah. how much how pervasive that addiction yeah. is in your life. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's like I haven't acknowledged the damage and the sin on any level up until this weekend, where it's just been like a bolt of lightning, a feeling, the tip of the iceberg, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like. Um, yeah, I haven't wanted to even see it. Yep, and I probably still feel, so, sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing you because yeah. of the way everyone's sitting. It's all right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I still feel you've got a lot of facade around this issue. I still feel you want the addiction and you want to tell yourself that you see it now or you've started to feel it now, but I don't feel that's the truth. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, look, it's quarter to four and dinner's at four. I think we probably need to wrap up. Thanks so much for doing your homework. Did it, who found it to be a beneficial exercise? Yeah? That's good. Who feels, like, totally lost with it still? A couple of people. That's funny, Megan. You tell me you feel totally lost and, in fact, I had a discussion with you in the dinner line last night where I felt you'd made some progress, so... You know, remember you said to me, look, I've recognised that I don't, I don't feel the sin of it. And you got quite emotional. And I said, that's progress, actually. A lot of us have to go through this place. And a lot of what you were starting to feel then was actually the feeling of hopelessness and a fear about change. And that's your block. So that's awesome. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Nick, you got a question before we finish? Yeah. Just very quickly. She wants to look at me a bit. Where's she going now? It's coming this way. Um, I've been feeling uh, a great deal of resistance and difficulty with uh, addressing this issue of addiction, especially with food, which I've shared with you before. Um, and in some ways, what I've been connecting with today is I, I feel that I also don't want to feel the hopelessness and despair about, um, not even about, just feel that. I don't want to feel that. And I wanted to just uh, ask you if that's um, what you're feeling as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree that there's a feeling of inevitability in you about being attacked and taken from that you're going to have to feel through. And I feel that challenging some of your addictions will help to bring that up. But yeah, I do agree. There's some resistance to that feeling. And when you feel it, honestly, all of you, when you start to feel these lack of faith feelings, it's, it just takes such a load off. You know, you feel lighter. You make space for feeling faith then. Yeah, so stick with it. Thanks, you guys. Um, Do you want to add, my love? Well, just now we come to the hard part of the day. Yes. Remember my promise this morning? How do you feel you went? Do, do you feel you guys had a bit more engagement there today? Yeah. Can you feel the difference in yourself when you're more engaged? Yeah? It feels much better up here. feels much better up here as a result of that engagement. A lot less energy, 
you're supplying some of the energy now. All right, so that, that's really good. Um, there are a few of you that aren't, and, uh, and so as you go out, if I pull you aside, can you just come aside? I want to talk, talk with those that I pull aside. Is that okay? So I'm going to stand over there, and you can just walk all out that direction. Is that all right? And you can walk past with nervousness and trepidation, if that's what you want to do. But remember that that's just your feeling. <laughs> But I just need to raise a few issues with a few individuals. Okay? No worries. Thank you.